three boys. If Jerome Damon's by himself with one gun, how's he going to go get the money? How's he going to run through pockets? What happens if somebody gets behind him? So to solve that problem, Defendant Chisholm and Defendant Cross, they were there to help hold these boys in place. And as these defendants are working together in order to get paid together, those three boys were thinking about how they were going to die together in the alley behind a Ruby Tuesday. But the boys did die. They didn't get shot. They didn't even get seriously injured. How can that be? Defendant holding the guns to their head, these defendants over them, threatening them, running their pockets. How could it be they managed to walk away or run away, really, without getting seriously injured? And the answer comes in the form of two police officers. Officer Josh Bedell, Officer Tom McCabe, they were patrolling that night. They did their duty. They drove down that road. And when they got there, they turned on their bright spotlight and they could see what was going on. They saw these two defendants and their buddy Damon standing over these boys. They saw the gun pressed to Jaquan Campos' head. And Officer Bedell, he's going to tell you, he jumped out of the car ready to do his duty. When all of a sudden, pop. And then he heard the two worst words any police officer could possibly imagine. Officer down. Officer down. My partner's been shot. But Tom McKay couldn't continue doing his job at that point, right? His officers, then, his partner's now down on the ground, shot. So out of his mind, go defending Cross. Out of his mind, goes defending Chisholm. And Damon kept shooting as he was running away. But after Damon was gone, out of his mind, was Jerome Damon. The only thing Tom McKay was worried about at that point was trying to save his partner's life. And so, Defendant Cross got away. Defendant Chisholm got away. And for a little while, Jerome Damon got away. Although, later, you're going to learn that Tom actually uh, hit Damon in the shootout, and he died a few blocks down the road. But initially, he also got away. Does Tom call for backup to chase these guys? No. Well, why not? He calls for backup. But he calls for backup to get somebody there as fast as they can, to get his partner to the hospital as fast as he can. And it's by luck and the hard work of Tom McCabe and the doctors at that hospital that Josh did survive. Through the course of this trial, I assure you, you will hear and see no forensic evidence, no physical evidence that Josh has had any connection there's no fingerprints, there's no DNA, there's no hairs, there's no fiber. No one will come in here and tell you that they saw a photograph depicting Martel Chisholm committing this crime. <coughs> Mr. Levy and myself have the same file. As a matter of fact, I would offer him an opportunity. I've got all my files. All of the discovery, all of the police reports, everything they gave us with respect to this case, everything that they gave us with respect to how they believe Mr. Chisholm is guilty of any of the crimes in the United States. Because I will tell you that if he looked at the same file that I looked at, the file he gave me, you won't find any evidence. I will assure you there is no physical evidence that Martel Chisholm is guilty of any of the crimes in the indictment. There is no physical evidence. There is no forensic evidence. For the course of this trial, I assure you, you will hear and see no forensic evidence, no physical evidence that Martel Chisholm had any connection to the case. There is no fingerprints. There is no DNA. There's no hairs, there's no fiber. No one will come in here and tell you that they saw a photograph depicting Martel Chisholm committing this crime. Because this case is riddled with doubt and is riddled with reason. Now, I'm not here. I'm not about to tell you. I have enough faith and confidence in you that as you hear the evidence, you will know. 